So a little overview before we go find the box. Um, these are actually, obviously this is an old actuator. We don't use these anymore. Uh, surprised I can still get them honestly. But uh, we've got old and new controls. So the SC here has all my new boxes, which is basically my first floor. All other three or four floors is all the old, I think they're lawn, and they come into here, my rooftop and my boxes. And this is the, this is a bridge. So this takes the old lawn signals and sees those VAVs and sends the message to the SC. So I can still read all of my old boxes. What's up guys? So, got some VAV boxes. Um, no heat call for these two boxes here, 36 and 37. So the biggest thing to start with is just knowing how our building works. <clears throat> We've got an IntelliPak. And we maintain 55 degree supplier. Right now you can see my discharge temperature is 60. Um, my set point active is 59.8. So we're right around that. Um, there is a 10 degree reset. So maintain 55 as the temperature outside goes down. My discharge air temperature will actually go up um, to kill, help keep heat in the space. We will go into a morning warm up and a daytime warm up if they're enabled. So instead of going to the IntelliPak rooftop because it's doing what it's supposed to, and we've got no alarms. We need to stick with our VAV box because each VAV box or FPT box, fan powered terminal, has an electric heat strip and this is the one in question. So I've got some parts. This one was actually heating yesterday, but you can see I've got no discharge temperature. That's because my discharge temperature probe has failed and then this one. You can see I'm putting out 67 degrees. It's gonna be hard to heat that space. It's actually a whole lot warmer today because um, I was able to close the damper a little bit. But, uh, so we can see our heat's at 100% and it shows my little graphic there where the heat is on. But to heat that space, we wanna get this temperature up. So what's happening is the uh, damper's actually stuck open you can see it shows me my command position is zero but what I found was the uh, actuator is actually sticking <clears throat> so this is our actuator here and we'll go up and take a look I don't know how well the video is going to go up in the ceiling because this is a tight spot but basically what happens is the bearings in this go out and then you get play side to side on here and there's a gear that fits in you can see the ridges on there that gear fits in right in there tight and then as it rotates it uh it's a screw type damper and the damper will move in and out to reduce the airflow so it's showing me at zero percent and i'm stuck probably about halfway um this does operate off a of triac so we'll see what we can get into. Let's get up there and take a look at the box. We're gonna have to get this actuator in and then see if we can't get this uh, supply temperature. Um, but 80 to 90 degrees should be sufficient to heat the space. It was 66 degrees or something in there yesterday before I adjusted a little bit, but um, the actuator is clearly, bearings are failing on it. Um, a lot of times what they'll say is it sounds like a hamster in a squirrel cage is how everyone describes it because you can hear those things rattling as it's trying to turn and skipping 
and stripping the the plastic the wheel gear that actually fits on here is plastic so let's get up and take a look at our box and see what we can get into as you can see it is a tight space this is our box damper is right inside of here we have a blower motor so blower motor comes on when it calls for heat like the heat strips are right there can't get to because that's the drywall ceiling i was you can see i was standing right there yesterday but i got an amp draw on the heater and verified it worked um, there's an airflow switch in there that connects to said blower motor over here and that uh, allows the heat to come on. So basically I've got to tear the bottom off of this unit, get a couple screws out, drop the bottom down, be able to get to that actuator. Now there's no real easy way to do this. There. You see the back side of that actuator right here gear that turns it. My damper, damper is actually right there. You can see it's partially out. So it'll come out. That damper will move all the way back into here to cut the airflow off completely. So, let's see. side is what the triad does to drive it open and close. I have a feeling it's sticking periodically and uh, not spinning even though it seems to be spinning okay now because the bearing has got a whole lot of play to it. So we're going to swap that actuator out see if we can get this guy closed. So you can see it's tight up there so I don't have too much uh, room to record. It's loud with the airflow. But I drove it just a little bit closed. And it's already 72 degrees so um, it seemed like the motor is actually driving so I think it's slipping periodically won't get much video up there but we'll get it replaced we'll come back down and take a look and see how it's doing then all right so here we are I'm a whole lot happier with it now you can see our discharge air temperature is 83 um, they've got the thermostat cranked up. There's people in there now. I can't access the space, but I wouldn't be surprised to see them crank it down once they start sweating in there. So um, they were freezing yesterday, but uh, it's hard to do some of this stuff. I had a few requests uh, on the live stream last Sunday, so uh, come check us out Sunday nights, uh, eight o'clock. Uh, Hughes Man, myself, and HVACR Survival. Come hang out with us for an hour or so and see what we got going on. Leave the trade better than you found it. I'm happy with this guy, so I'm going to leave everything where it's at. We'll just watch that space temp. Um, see you guys on the next one.